Today's lesson is about parametric equations and calculus. So we have um, <clears throat> parametric equations that we're going to start with. So you're going to have two equations. You'll remember from pre-cal, you'd have an x of t equals equation and a y of t equals equation. And both of those equations together kind of explain vertical and horizontal motion in terms of time. So there's going to be two important formulas that you need to know. Uh, the first one is pretty easy. If you want to find the derivative of y with respect to x of a set of parametric equations, then you're going to do the derivative of y with respect to time over the derivative of x with respect to time. So that's going to be one of your note cards. That's how you take a derivative of parametric equations. Now the second derivative equation is kind of different and a little bit unusual. Um, if you're doing the second derivative of a set of parametric equations, you are taking the derivative with respect to x, your dy dx equation, which seems like Sure, no big deal, just take the derivative of the derivative with respect to x. But if you'll remember, your dy dx is not in terms of x. It's dy dt over dx dt, which makes it a little bit of a mess because that's all in terms of t and you're differentiating with respect to x. So, um, the way you're going to do this is you're going to, you can kind of think of this as a multiplication here. Uh, if you'll remember when we learned about parametrics, um, parameters, and differentials, you can work with them independently. So if I'm taking a fraction and I'm multiplying it by this other fraction, it's like a complex fraction, it's like this one is over 1, and you can say that's d dx of dy dt all divided by dx dt. And you can multiply in any order. So right here, dx on the bottom of one and dt on the bottom of the other, those can be reversed. And you can say that's d dt of dy dx over dx dt. So this is algebraically equivalent to what we started with, but it allows you to take derivatives of things um, that have times in them. So I'm never going to ask you to do this for me. I'm just showing this for your benefit because a lot of students have asked me over the years, where did that formula come from? Why is it what it is? Because it's a little bit counterintuitive. So what you're going to need to memorize on a note card is that the second derivative equals derivative with respect to time of dy dx divided by dx dt. So um, that is what you'll put on your note card for your second derivative. You're not just taking the derivative of dy dx because it's with respect to time. You have to divide it by dx dt as an extra step. All right, so now that we know our two big formulas that we're going to be using, let's do an example problem. So first example, we're going to be given x equals 1 half t squared plus 1 and y equals 1 third t cubed minus t, and we're going to be given the parameter t equals 2. This is a specific time we're going to be working with at a given point in the problem. So this is a multi-step problem. For part A, um, it tells us to find dy dx, so the derivative of y with respect to x. So if you'll remember, the formula is dy dx equals dy dt divided by dx dt. So we're just going to take the derivative of y with respect to time, and that'll go on top. Then we're going to take the derivative of 
x with respect to time, and that will go on the bottom. So the derivative of y with respect to time, derivative of 1 third t cubed minus t, would be t squared minus 1. And the derivative of x with respect to time is t. And that's just using your power rule. And uh, technically that answer is okay, but if you're doing multiple choice or checking the back of the book for homework problems, they're going to simplify that a little bit, separate it into two separate fractions, so then it would be t minus 1 over t. Um, now, for part b, you're supposed to find the second derivative. And the second derivative equation is the derivative with respect to time of dy dx divided by dx dt. So the derivative of y with respect to x was the answer to the last problem. We're going to take the derivative of that with respect to time. We might want to think of that as t minus t to the negative 1 power so that we can use the power rule for that. So the derivative of the first term, t, is 1, and the derivative of the second term would be plus t to the negative 2. And then we have to divide it by dx dt, which we already came up with. Um, the derivative of x with respect to time is still t. So that is the second derivative. Now, <clears throat> the only problem with this is it's technically a complex fraction because it means 1 plus 1 over t squared over t. So this is not simplified. We need to think of a clever form of 1 that we can multiply the numerator and the denominator by to cancel out that t squared as the denominator in the numerator of that greater fraction. So if we multiply it by t squared over t squared, and that would distribute on the top, we will get t squared plus 1 over t cubed. And that's the answer that we're looking for for this problem. All right. Um, hope you've got all this taken down well on notes because I've got to go to a new slide to do the next part of this same problem. Okay, so part C says find the slope of the curve at the given parameter. So dy dx is the slope, and they want it at the given parameter they gave us in the problem, so such that t equals 2. Well, we just figured out that the first derivative on part a was t minus 1 over t, so we're going to do 2 minus 1 over 2. 2 take away a half is 3 halves, so that's the answer to that part. Then part d says find the concavity of the curve at the given parameter. So that's the second derivative is what we use to find concavity. Oh, and we need it to be such that t equals 2. So our second derivative was t squared plus 1 divided by t cubed. So we're going to do 2 squared plus 1 divided by 2 cubed. So 4 plus 1 is 5 over 8. Now, it asked us to find the concavity. What does 5 eighths tell us about concavity? If that's the value of the second derivative, that value is positive. So the curvature or concavity would be concave up. Oops. 
the stylus does not work good. Con concave. It has a hole in it. <laughs> Up. Okay. That completes example one. Now we shall go on to example two. Example two has another formula that you're going to need to know. Arc length in parametric form. So this is a formula that you will put on a note card and memorize. The length is equal to the integral from a to b of the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. Whoops, that square should be outside of the parentheses. dt. So, you're going to want to write that down on your notebook paper, and then I'm going to go to a new slide so I can start my example at the top for example two. All right. Number two. We're going to find the arc length of the curve with x equals cosine t plus t sine t and y equals sine t minus t cosine t. And we're going to do this for t values from 0 to pi inclusive. So for our formula, we're going to need to know dx dt and dy dt. So the derivative of x with respect to time is going to be the derivative of the cosine, which is negative sine t. And then we have to take the derivative of t sine t, which is a product. So we have to use the product rule. So we copy the first function, t, multiply it by the derivative of the second function, cosine t, add that to the second function, sine t, multiplied by the derivative of the first function, 1. And so when you do that, negative sine, oh wait, negative sine t and positive sine t add up to zero. So this should just be, um, is this the eraser? Whoa, what did that do? I'm not sure, sorry. Um, t cosine t. That's dx dt. Now we'll do dy dt. The derivative of y with respect to time. The derivative of the sine is the cosine. And then we use the product rule for the second part. So it's going to be copy the first function, negative t. Multiply it by the derivative of the second function, cosine, which would be negative sine t. Plus copy the second function, cosine t and multiply it by the derivative of the first function, negative 1. Notice the cosine t and the negative cosine t will cancel out again, similar to the dx dt, and negative times negative is positive, so this will be t sine t. So now I know what dx dt is, t cosine t, and dy dt is t sine t. So I can use those in my arc length formula. We're going to integrate from 0 to pi. Those are the values you're given in the problem for the time. Um, the square root of t cosine t, that's dx dt squared, plus t sine t squared dt. And um, when you square these, uh, both factors inside of the parentheses get squared. I'm going on to the next slide now. It's going to be the arc length equals the integral from 0 to pi of the square root of 
t squared cosine squared t plus t squared sine squared t dt. Now what you might notice here is that t squared is a factor of both of these terms. We do want to do this by hand. This is a by hand problem. So we want to simplify that integrand. If you factor the t squared out of both terms, you're left with cosine squared t plus sine squared t. And what is the cosine squared plus the sine squared of t? Find out who all of my star pre-cal students are. That's a trig identity. What does that add up to? 1 sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Pythagorean identity. And then, oops, somehow my upper limit of integration got messed up there. Um, the integral from 0 to pi of the square root of t squared is just t. And that's a very easy problem to do. Um, power rule backwards on. Add 1 to the power, multiply by the reciprocal of the new power, and evaluate that from 0 to pi. So 1 half t squared evaluated from 0 to pi. So that means we're going to plug in pi, 1 half of pi squared minus 1 half of 0 squared is just going to be pi squared over 2. And that's the length of the curve. All right, now we're going to go on to example 3. Um, for example 3, we're going to find the equation of a tangent line. Oops, what happened? Hmm. Find the equation of the tangent line to the curve at the given point x equals 2t plus 4 y equals 8t squared minus 2t plus 4 and the point is 610 so always and forever all year in calculus whenever you hear tangent line you should immediately think of one formula. There's one formula that should come to mind, and you learned it a long time ago. That formula is the point-slope form of a line. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Well, they give you a point in this problem. 610 is your x1, y1. So you already know that. So you can fill that in. y minus 10 equals m times x minus 6. And now, all you have to do is figure out what m is. So m is your slope. And slope in calculus is dy dx. And dy dx in parametrics is dy dt divided by dx dt. So we're going to take the derivative of the y equals equation and put that in the numerator. 16t minus 2. And take the derivative of the x equals equation and put that in the denominator. And that's just 2. That can be simplified because 2 is a factor of both terms here. So 8t minus 1 is your slope equation. But I don't want to put an equation for m. I want an actual number. So how do I know what t value to put in to get a number? I have a point, but I don't have a time. So uh, this involves just a little bit more algebra. We're going to 
take our original equations, plug in 6 for x and 10 for y. That's going to create a system of two equations with one unknown, the time. And we're going to solve for whatever time these equations um, reach this point. Now the problem is both of these equations need to be at this point at the same time. So t the time, sometimes there's more than one time involved that where it might hit at one equation or the other, but both equations must be there at the same time. So if x is 10, I mean, sorry, x is 6, we're going to say 6 equals 2t plus 4. Well, if you subtract 4 on both sides, 2 equals 2t, and t equals 1. And you might think you can just stop there and be done, but you really can't. You need to make sure that the other equation also gives you t of 1. So we're going to say 10 equals 8t squared minus 2t plus 4. And get that set equal to 0 by subtracting 10 on both sides. Everything here is divisible by 2. So we're going to say 0 equals 4t squared minus t minus 3. And then factor that quadratic equation 4t times t. 3, 1, and I want minus 1 and plus 3. Sorry, that's hard to read. So this gives you a t value of negative 3 fourths. This one gives you a t value of 1. So t equals 1 is the one that we want. We're going to plug that in for the time that we got for our slope. 8 times 1 minus 1, 7, no, yeah, 7. So the equation of the tangent line is y minus 10 equals 7 times x minus 6. That's the equation we get. Now, um, you are fine leaving your equation in point-slope form. Sometimes on multiple choice questions, you'll find the answer in slope-intercept form, or sometimes set equal to 0, um, which is a kind of a strange form. Just... You're always welcome to leave it in point-slope form, but know that sometimes you might be comparing your answer to a linear equation in another form. Okay, we are about halfway through the notes at this point in time, so we will go on to example four. Example four says, find all points if any, don't you love that? There could be one, there could be multiple, there could be none. Of horizontal and vertical tangency to the curve. Sorry for my messy handwriting with this stylus. X equals 2t cubed minus 15t squared plus 24t plus 7. And y equals t squared plus t plus 1. So we want to find points of horizontal and vertical tangency. Well, tangency, hmm, I'll let you think about what a little point, a plan of action, a little strategy. I'll give me a second to contemplate that. How would you know if a curve had a horizontal or vertical tangent line. What about, what would indicate that to you? Mathematically, algebraically speaking. Think back to your um, graphical analysis unit. How would, how would you know if the slope was to, of the tangent line was horizontal? the tangent line would be horizontal if the slope was equal to zero. So we need a slope equation. We need to set that equal to zero to find points of horizontal tangency. 
What about vertical tangency? How would you know if an equation had a vertical tangent line? What would the slope be there? It would be undefined, which means the slope would be undefined. When you did slope formula in Algebra 1, it was undefined when you got 0 on the bottom. So if you have a slope formula that's a fraction, the denominator should equal 0. If the to have a vertical tangent line to be an undefined slope. All right, so we're going to need a slope equation. dy dx equals dy dt divided by dx dt. So the derivative of y with respect to time is 2t plus 1. The derivative of x with respect to time is 6t minus 30t plus 24. Okay, so if we're going to have a horizontal tangent line, then the slope should equal 0. And the slope's going to be equal to 0 if the numerator equals 0. we have a vertical tangent line, that's going to be when the slope is undefined. Which is going to happen when the denominator of our slope equation equals zero. So we have to Set the numerator equal to zero, solve. Set the denominator equal to zero, solve, um, to get these respective parts. Let's do the horizontal tangent line first. Let's set the numerator equal to zero. So the numerator is 2t plus 1 equals zero. So we're setting the numerator equal to zero. 2t equals negative 1 divided by 2, t equals negative 1 half. Ooh, sorry. Now, is that the answer to when we have a horizontal tangent line? Well, that does give you the time when the, when the tangent line is horizontal, but it said to find the points. So to find the point, we have to use our x equals and our y equals equation and plug in this time find out what the x and the y coordinates are. So it's 2 times negative 1 half cubed minus 15 times negative 1 half squared plus 24 times negative 1 half plus 7. So that's 2 times negative 1 eighth minus 15 times 1 fourth plus 12 plus 7 so negative 1 fourth minus 15 fourths plus, oh wait, this should have been a negative, minus 12 because this is negative 1 half times 24. Negative 12 and positive 7 will give us a negative 5 here. Should have been a negative. Okay, so I've got fourths here. Let's see, negative 16 fourths plus negative 5, but negative 16 fourths, that's just negative 4. Negative 4 and negative 5 makes negative 9. So that's my x-coordinate. The y-coordinate is going to be negative 1 half squared plus negative 1 half plus 1. So that's positive 1 fourth minus 1 half plus 1. You could get this in terms of fourths. 1 fourth minus 2 fourths plus 4 fourths is 3 fourths. So the point where we have horizontal tangent line is negative 9 3 fourths. One point with horizontal tangency. Okay, now we're going to find the points of vertical tangency. Denominator of that original slope equation equal to 0. So that denominator was 6t squared minus 30t plus 24. 
and everything there is divisible by 6 minus 5t plus 4 equals 0. That quadratic equation is factorable. Factors of 4 that add to make 5 are 4 and 1, both negative. So times are 4 and 2. This means there's a possibility of two different points where we have vertical tangency. One at the time 4, one at the time 2. So we're going to plug these points, these times, into both the x equals and y equals equations and get two different points. So x equals um, 2 times 4 cubed minus 15 times 4 squared plus 24 times 4 plus 7. So that's 2 times 64 minus 15 times 16 plus 96 plus 7. So that's 128 minus 240 plus 103, which is negative 112 plus 103, which is negative 9. Oops, negative 9. Now the y value that goes with this is 4 squared plus 4 plus 1, so that's 16, plus 4 is 21. So the first point is negative 9, 21. Now we need another one when the time is 2. That was the time 4 point. We need a time 2 point. Going back. Oh, I wrote t equals 2, but it was t equals 1. Time is 2, the x equals equation will be 2 times, is it time 2 or 1? So 2 times 1 cubed minus 15 times 1 squared plus 24 times 1 plus 7. So that's 2 subtract 15 plus 24 plus 7. So that's negative 13 plus 31, which is 18. Uh, y equals 1 squared plus 1 plus 1. So that's 3. So that point is 18, 3. So we have vertical tangency at the point 18, 3. All right, that was a lengthy problem. Next... We shall do example five. We're going to determine the open T intervals on which the curve is concave down or concave The equations are x equals 3t squared and y equals t cubed minus t. So to determine curvature, concavity, we have to find a second derivative, which we have to start by finding the, oops, dy dx, first derivative. So the derivative of y with respect to time is Remember, because we're going to do dy dt divided by dx dt. 3t squared minus 1. The derivative of x with respect to time is going to be 6t. Now, if I have to take the derivative of this guy, I probably would prefer not to use the quotient rule. So I'm going to split this into two separate fractions, 3t squared over 6t minus 1 over 16. And I could think of this as 1 half t minus 1 6 t to the negative 1 power. And that's going to be easier for me to use for my second derivative. So my second derivative formula, which you do need to memorize, is whoops, d dt of dy 
dx divided by dx dt. So we're taking the derivative of the answer to the last problem with respect to time and putting that in the numerator and then dividing it by the dx dt we already had, 6t. So this derivative would be 1 half plus 1 6 t to the negative 2. And I need to simplify this fraction a little bit. Um, we could think of this as 1, oops, there it goes. Okay, 1 half plus 1 over 6 t to the negative 2 times 1 over 6 t, which is 1 over 12 t plus 1 over 36. That t to the negative 2 can go to the bottom, so that's t squared times t on the bottom. That's t cubed on the bottom. And I think that when you check this in the back of your book, they're going to put it all together as one fraction, getting a common denominator. It's not necessary to do so, but to check your answer it is. So the first fraction you'd multiply by a 3t squared over a 3t squared to get a common denominator. So that'd be 3t squared plus 1 over 36t cubed. So there's your second derivative. When the second derivative is positive, the curve is concave up. When the second derivative is negative, the curve is concave down. So what we need to do is we need to find the places where the second derivative equals zero or where it's undefined, and then check the signs between and beyond those values to see where it's positive, where it's negative. So first, let's find the zeros of this second derivative by setting the numerator equal to zero. Um, so we've got 3t squared plus 1 equals zero. So 3t squared equals negative 1. t squared equals negative 1 half, uh, third, sorry. If you take the square root on both sides, you're taking the square root of a negative. So this means the second derivative never is going to equal zero at all. There are no zeros. So we just need to check to see places where it might be undefined. It's undefined when the denominator equals zero. So 36t cubed equals zero. Divide by 36 on both sides, t cubed equals zero. Take the key root on both sides, t equals zero. So it's undefined at t equals zero. So we just need to check some number to the right of that and some number to the left of that. Plug them into that derivative and see what the sign is. Plug it into that second derivative. Okay. So let's try 1 and negative 1. You don't have to pick 1 and negative 1. You could pick 10 and negative 10. You could pick 100 and negative 100. You could pick 3.4 and negative 12 sevenths. <laughs> Whatever number you want, but 1 and negative 1 is easy. So we want the second derivative such that t equals 1. So that's going to be 3 times negative 1 squared plus 1 over 36 times negative 1 cubed, which is 3 plus 1 is 4 in the numerator, and that's going to be a negative. So negative 36, that simplifies to negative 1 ninth. So this is negative here. That means the graph is going to be concave down there. And then the second derivative such that t equals 1 is going to be 3 times 1 plus 1 over 36 times 1 cubed. So this is 4 over 36, which is positive 1 ninth. So it's positive here. So the answer to the problem is going to be concave down from oops, 0 to infinity
Hang on. I might have made a mistake. Okay. Yeah, I made a mistake. Um, when t is positive 1, we got a negative. No, that's right. Oh, I plugged in the negative 1 and I wrote positive 1. Okay. When t is positive 1, that math is here. When t is a negative 1, that math is up here. So that's a big problem. I apologize. So, when t is 1, we have a positive answer. And when t is negative 1, we have a negative answer. So this is concave down from negative infinity to 0 and concave up from 0 to infinity. All right, so working with a stylus on an iPad is not an ideal way to do these problems. And hopefully you are keeping your work nice and neat so that it's easy to keep track of plugging in which number gives you a positive and plugging in which number gives you a negative. Okay, we have one example problem left. This last example problem requires the use of a calculator. Absolutely requires it. So you might want to pause the video if you don't have a calculator and go get one. So, for number six, final example, you must use a graphing calculator. So, um, it says x equals t squared minus t plus 2 y equals t cubed minus 3t, and t equals negative 1. So for part A, it says sketch the graph of the curve. You are to do this with a calculator. So in order to do this, uh, you did some graphing with parametrics in your calculator last year, but I know it's been a while, so I'm going to remind you how you do this. You hit the mode button, and then you're going to choose PAR, which stands for parametric mode. Normally, your calculator is in function mode, which means when you hit Y equals, you see Y equals there. When you hit Y equals when you're in parametric mode, you're going to see X sub 1 of T equals and y sub 1 of t equals and you have to type in t squared minus t plus 2 and t cubed minus 3t in order to graph this in parametric mode. You need both those equations to make the graph. So you type those in then you hit the graph button and after you hit the graph button you're going to hit the trace button or the table button you could use either one to get points to plot now if you do this you might want to hit window first and change your t min to equal negative 10 to see the complete curve because it starts at 0 as the default and that's not going to give you the whole picture here so you might have to play with your window time values to get the graph going good so whoa. I'm not going to be able to graph it all pretty on this iPad. I can't even write pretty. Um, but you're going to get some points to plot and you're going to plot those points out and then you're going to connect them and when you hit the graph button, which if you adjust the window and then you go back and you hit graph, 
you're going to see the where this graph starts and where this graph ends. And that matters a lot in parametric equations. If you'll remember, you put arrows on your parametric equation graph to show where it starts and where it travels. So these arrows are indicating that I started down here on the bottom right. I went up, made a loop, and then ended up going upward in the first quadrant after that. So that's what I need to see on your graph. How many arrows do you need to put? Just, I mean, not that many, but enough to indicate the direction of travel. All right, so for part B, it says find dx dt, dy dt, and dy dx at the given parameter. You can do all of this in your calculator, and you should, okay? So the parameter they gave us is t equals negative 1. So what you're going to do is you're going to hit from your graph second and the trace button. That takes you to your calculate menu. You're going to choose option 4, which is dx dt. You're going to type t equals negative 1 and then enter. Negative 1 was given in the problem as the parameter. And then it's going to tell you dx dt equals negative 3. So that's the first answer to the part B. Then you have to do dy dt. So to do dy dt, you hit second trace again, but instead of choosing option 4, this time you choose option 3, dy dt. But you, then you do the same thing. Hit t equals negative 1, enter, and then it's going to give you dy dt equals 0. And then finally, to get dy dx, you hit second trace, then choose option 2 for dy dx, type t equals negative 1, press enter, and then it's going to give you dy dx equals 0. So that's pretty easy when you're doing that with your calculator.